ladies and gentlemen, my name is Total Biscuit, the Eurogamer Expo 2011. I'm here with Colin Johansson, the lead content designer from Guild Wars 2, and of course the mighty ArenaNet. Welcome to the show. Oh, thank you. Right, so we have covered this game in a great deal of detail due primarily to my own personal bias. So we just blew up some stuff in PvP, so we're going to tackle something a little bit bigger. Why don't you tell us a little bit about what we're about to see? Absolutely. So uh, this is an open world event. Uh, this is one of the larger events in Guild Wars 2. Uh, it's actually part of a big dynamic event chain that happens in this map, uh, where the undead armies are basically fighting against the Hylic, who are the frog people in Guild Wars 2, and they're conquering and wiping them out out of their homelands. Uh, and at the end of this event chain, if you push the undead all the way back to the edge of the ocean, this uh, big boss we're going to see shows up for a big epic battle for all yeah. the players in the game. Uh, we've actually, for the purposes of today's demo, we've decoupled it from the event chain that he's a part of. So okay. instead, this event just runs on its own every 20 minutes or so. Normally, right. he'd be a part of this big, long event chain that leads up to this. So. Okay, well, let's do it. Let's slay a dragon, shall we? Yes. So I'm going to be playing, and you're going to be telling me how terrible I am. <laughs> so Sounds good. I'm going to kick into the demo right now. So I assume, uh, do we start with a character? Uh, yeah, we need an Asura or a Silvari. Okay. We'll go with an Asura. We showed you a Silvari yesterday, I think. Yep, continue. Okay, so we'll throw one together nice and quick. All right, what class do you recommend? Uh, you could play pretty much anything. Uh, if you want to try, let's see, what, what have you not tried recently? You could try the Engineer if you wanted to. Yeah, uh, I think we've done the Engineer in PvP. Okay. You I'm could thinking... Do I don't think we've done a Guardian. I think that's a Guardian or... Yeah, it's just a Guardian. That's the only one we haven't done. All so right, let's give it a let's shot. Let's do a Guardian. Yep. yep. It seems like I'm going to have a lot of responsibility. We're just going to skip through this. Okay. That is one crazy armored little <laughs> being that we've got <laughs> yeah. right there. She'll just... Yeah, we're just going to skip through these. We've already shown a lot of character creation. Infinity Ball. That sounds like some kind of nightclub I'd find myself in <laughs> when incredibly drunk. It's not a gnome, but we're calling it that anyway. It looks like a gnome. It looks pontable, so... <laughs> Definitely pondable. <laughs> Absolutely. One of these days I'm going to find an MMO where you have a team-based attack that punts a gnome at your opponent, <laughs> and which then explodes. <laughs> and I can guarantee I will sub to that game. So We'll, we'll start looking into that then. Exactly. Absolutely. <laughs> The game mode, which involves doing that, would be brilliant. Uh, we do have one where you can fire little mini golems who float through the air and explode. That's, that's it's a good kind start. of like mini gnomes. Yeah, that's yeah, a good close. start. You know, I could close my eyes and I could believe that I'm punishing them for their, their wrongs. Okay, right, we are in the Sparkfly Fen, which I believe we showed you a little bit of yesterday. So, where do we go? All right, so if you want to go ahead and hit M and open up your map, I'll yep. show you where the uh, this big battle happens. If you go down to the uh, bottom southwest corner there and yep. take that waypoint. Splintered uh, Coast? Yes. Okay. So this is right on the edge of the battle between the, the front lines of the battle between the Hylic and the Silvari who are fighting off the undead coming into this map. Okay. And uh, since this is a dynamic event, I can't guarantee that it's going on right now. We're going to have okay. to come in and see what's happening. Yep, we, we can, we can oh, hang around. It is definitely going on. Oh, yep, that, that looks pretty <laughs> stompy. Let's head in that direction, shall we? So you'll see those big bone walls that he's got up around him. Yep. Uh, that's one of his, uh, to quaddle the sunless, that's the dragon we're fighting here. Yep. Uh, that's one of his abilities is he actually summons these giant bone walls to protect himself okay. uh, from players who are on turrets and also trap players in uh, uh, close to the dragon. Okay. All right. We have a few friends to start oh, yes. with. So uh, this is this dynamic event, uh, generally it requires about 10 people at a base number to be able to participate. Yep. And like it any event, like uh, it scales up to about 100 or so. Yes, it looks like the uh, we have a, a few problems right here with the number of mobs that we've managed to find. Yeah, you're definitely going to need some help down here. We'll see if some other players are around. Yeah, looks I like think there's so. one running we're in behind you. Yes, indeed. We're not, we're not quite the level we need to be in order to kill absolutely everything. I don't think that's going to be enough. We can try. Let's see if we can get one down here. Yep, a focus on the thrall. There you go. Ah. Well done. None can stop the might of the gnome. <laughs> so tell me a little bit, while we're doing this, tell me a little bit about the Guardian class, since it, it does seem to be an interesting hybrid but sort of between a kind of tank and a paladin, really. Absolutely, yeah. So the, uh, the Guardian is a class that has, uh, well, we can show you the down skills here real quick. Uh, yep. What you've done there is you've actually put a symbol on the ground. And those symbols do damage to enemies that are in them and actually buff allies and yourself who move into them. Okay. Uh, you have your healing skill that you just used there, which actually puts up a protective bubble around you. And it stops damage that comes in and it heals you while it's up. And the Guardian is, has a lot of control skills. Uh, if you use, uh, I'll, we'll look at it in a second here. Yeah, if, if we use the dying ability, yes. which I've extremely <laughs> practiced that. Yep, I am now finally dead. 
I tried, I tried my best. It's okay, we can respawn there and hopefully try and avoid the mobs this time around. So you can get kind of a, uh, a horizon view of everything that's going on in this battle while you're up here. Yep. So you'll see directly in front of you, there's a bunch of smashed up stuff. And those are actually turrets okay. uh, that players can man and fire in at the dragon. Okay. And there are NPCs scattered all around them called turret reconfigurers and uh, Hylic repair guys. Okay. And you can resurrect those NPCs and they'll come up and start rebuilding the turrets so you can get on them. Uh, and this battle comes in a lot of different layers. So you're going to need players who are blowing up those bone walls. Yep. And you want players who are manning the turrets. Okay. Then there are waves of undead that, who have been killing you, uh, who come running in. And oh, you good at that. Yeah. yeah <laughs> and you want, you want players who are fighting off those waves of undead to defend the guys who are on the turrets. Now, you can see there's some little tendrils sticking up out of the ground, like that right there, called yep. Tequaddle's Fingers. Uh -huh. And the dragon summons those, and those fingers actually grab players and huck them back towards the dragon. Right. So you need to blow those up before they throw people off of the... Uh, uh, the turrets that are in the back there. Okay. I'm planning an attack right here. I'm trying to see if I can maybe... I might be able to pull one of these across. Perhaps. Right. Ha what kind of range does one have? Do I have a ranged weapon? So that one right there is your sword. Yep. Uh, That's and, not a ranged weapon. Definitely not ranged. Yep. Uh, your scepter and focus is probably the furthest ranged weapon that the uh, the Guardian has available okay, to let's, it. Okay, let's equip that and let's see if we can toss something in his general direction that might bring him over here. I think I might be out of range. Yes, I am. So he is not bothered by that. Now I am in range. Okay. So let's try and do some damage to him. So this guy's a range guy, so you're not going to be able to pull him too far. Okay. Uh, and well. skills four and five are your torch. So those are more up-close skills uh, for your offhand weapon. Okay. Cool. I see that. So skill two is actually going to do a pulsing AOE on the ground where he is. There we go. We might find a friend as we go, but I think we're okay. That's one down. Hey, level up. That might help. Oh, my. Yeah, that's a big guy. So you can use skill three on him, actually, and it'll trap him in chains. And then you okay. can get away from him, and he's not going to be able to chase you. Yep. And then we can unleash something like that. Frazzle him just a little bit. He did bring a friend with him, but he's quite badly hurt. Let's, I think, it's probably best to switch back to something a little bit more dangerous. What weapon is this that I'm uh, going to So you're using? on the staff now, and okay. the staff has actually, uh, the number one skill on the staff is actually a uh, short-ranged AOE attack that does a wave out in front of you, okay. uh, and it removes conditions from allies, and it does damage to enemies. Skill four there is actually a line on the ground that you drew that enemies can't cross that line. So it gives you some control over the terrain. Okay. And skill three that you've got uh, will uh, put down a circle on the ground that protects you. Uh, skill seven, the one you're doing right now, is actually a wall of deflection, so it's going to bounce projectiles back at guys. That's useful. Unfortunately, I'm against three enemies at the moment, which is rather tricky to deal with. They're definitely trying to fear you. Yeah, they are not happy with me at all. Now, he oh. is quite weak, so let's focus him for the time being. Get a little bit of heal here. Beat him down with everything we have. Symbol of protection. Let's get that on the ground. Okay, mm -hmm. that's the caster down. Basic principles, folks. That's right. Target <laughs> management. And what other skills do we have here? All right, so you have smite conditions. So when yep. enemies put conditions on you there, you can use that to blow all the conditions off of you and do a bunch of damage. Okay. Uh, skill nine is a signet that you have. And as long as it's up, it gives your character might, which means they do more damage. And you can spend that signet to actually do damage and knock a guy down. Okay. A quick heal there. Okay. Get him to stand in there. Now, I believe we had that nasty cleansing flame here. If we switch there it over to go. this weapon set, then things start to go in our favor. And that's a really tough undead guy right there. Is That's a veteran undead. So he's, he's intended to be battled by about three people. Uh, so you're doing a pretty good job taking him down here. Six years of MMO experience does help to some degree, <laughs> it's at least. It's paying off. <laughs> that an extremely effective single target crowd control ability. Unfortunately, can, can we break out of that? Yes, we can. There's an ability to do that. All right. You, sir, are going down. There we go. So since we don't have too many other players here, I can kind of talk you through some of the other mechanics that go yeah, on in this good. battle. Uh, off to your right, you're actually going to see a giant laser that's floating out there. Okay. They're in the distance. Uh, oh, yes. Giant laser is always helpful. And that's the Asura Mega Laser. And there's actually a team of Asura periodically during this battle who try to get up to that laser and charge it up. Okay. And if you manage to defend them, they'll actually unleash a huge blast at the dragon. It destroys all the bone walls in its path, knocks the dragon down, and it stuns him for about 20 seconds so everybody can run right up by the dragon and unload a whole bunch of damage on him while he's down. This will. So uh, there's there's really, you know, this this fight just has a whole lot of different layers where if there's a whole bunch of players here, there's going to be people who are fighting right in front of the dragon, 
and they're dealing with the things that the dragon does up close. There's people who's back here fighting on the turrets, defending the turrets, rezzing the NPCs who are on the repair crews and manning the turrets. And then there's another layer of players who are further back who are basically defending the Asura Mega Laser in the background. So it's a very large dynamic fight and everyone needs to get involved. Definitely. Are you concerned that the fact that you know, this fight very much requires a lot of teamwork and perhaps it's going to be not necessarily encountered by organized guilds. You might end up having a lot of public players involved in that. Does it concern you that perhaps they might not be able to do the job or are there elements of the game that sort of drive it towards particular tasks? Uh, so we generally, for anything that uh, we expect a lot of players in the open world to team up and do, we try to make it very visual and clear to understand. So like the bone walls are these giant walls of bone that pop up, and it's very easy to see that, hey, there's this big thing that's blocking attacks. We should try to destroy that. Okay. Uh, the turrets getting destroyed, it's very easy to understand. There's things coming up attacking them. They destroy the turrets, and you want to be on the turrets. Uh, when the laser is charging, there's actually an objective that pops up that counts down showing you until the laser is going to fire and shows you the health bar for the laser so that you understand, hey, this is what we should be doing. Uh, so we try to make these dynamic events that happen out in the open world very visual, very easy to understand, and something where the players don't necessarily need to communicate together to participate in it. Uh, and instead, they just sort of naturally end up doing that. Now, we have some bosses at the end of our uh, hardcore raid dungeons that are you know, five-man raids, and those ones are, require much more group coordination. The skills that they have require everybody's working together the whole time. And those ones, we do expect that players will need to work together to defeat them uh, by communicating a lot. Okay. Now, since we're just sort of working our way through here, I'm helping out as much as I can by resurrecting people and then pulling half the area from a 20-mile radius. Uh, <laughs> we, know a, we know quite a bit about the way that sort of these dynamic events work. Mm -hmm. Now, there are some games that have tried dynamic events before, and the concern being that... The, the dynamic events in lower level areas, because people will eventually level past them, will end up being in a pretty horrible state. So if you end up going back to that area, then the whole area is taken and you can't use it or anything like that. So mm -hmm. what kind of protection do you have against that issue? So we're, we're doing two things to deal with that. Uh, the first one is, you know, we have a sidekicking system in our game. So if you are over leveled for events in an area and you're coming back and you're trying to grief the event and ruin the experience for everybody, the game will actually sidekick you down to the levels of the players in that area okay. to ensure that you can't ruin the experience for everybody else and there's always enough for everyone to do. Now the, the second thing that we do is all our events dynamically scale. So the number of players that are there determine the difficulty of the event. Uh, this is a very rare event that actually requires a minimum of about 10 players to do it. Just about every event in Guild Wars 2 scales down to a single player. So if everybody's moved on past the newbie zone and you're the only one in there, the events will all scale down so you can actually participate in everything. Okay. And you don't have those moments like in some, uh, some more traditional MMOs where you can't do any of the content. Instead, everything is available to you. Oh, fair enough. Makes perfect sense to me. Unfortunately, we cannot get anywhere near the dragon. <laughs> so you can probably sneak around the sides if you want to dodge the uh, the armies of undead that are out there, and we can get a little closer and show you more uh, oh, yes. more uh, what's going on up close by him. Yeah, we'd definitely like to actually see him, and he's hiding behind the wall. He's very shy. Mm, okay, let's avoid that. He's friendly, at least. Let's give me some good combat experience as the guardian, though. That's nice. Yeah, the Guardian has a lot of great uh, great control skills. Your elite skill there, uh, skill skill 10, actually puts up a giant bubble. Uh, and when you put that down, it actually deflects, uh, stops all projectiles, and it protects everyone who's inside of that area. Right so nice. it's just kind of a big emergency button that you can pop and save everybody who's inside of it. Always useful to know. Okay, let's sneak around here. Maybe I'll have a little look see at this guy. So you should be able to actually get up close to some of those bone walls and blow a couple of them up if you want to see what that feels wow, like. Okay, let's give that a shot. Those things can take quite a lot of punishment. Let's switch to something a little heavier, shall we? I believe there's a great so the sword. Great there sword's go. pretty good with the. Uh, yeah, that's just smack him about. Pretty a adorable. Bit. Yeah. Their great sword is our short sword. There we go. Well, that does some reasonable damage. Faithful strikes. I think uh, those of you who played Retribution Paladin in WoW might uh, enjoy this particular combo. Yes. Very much holy smiting going on here. 
But yeah, this is, uh, it's going to take really multiple players to work through these bone walls. That's Quite definitely tough. the intent, yeah. Okay. So you can sneak around the side there. Uh, and watch out for those little Tequadal's fingers that'll send you flying. Yep. So uh, that guy right there is a bloated creeper, and the dragon summons these giant creepers who actually slowly walk towards the players. Yep. And players need to all work together to do a whole bunch of damage before the creeper gets close to them. Uh, if the creeper gets close to any of the players, it'll actually explode and send acid and poison flying everywhere. And it does a whole nice. ton of damage and works you down really quick. Okay. So that's a great strategy, putting your line of warding up to keep him away. So he, he sees that, and he's running away from you because he figures he can't get to you right now. Oh, that's nice, yeah. Um, so they're not entirely stupid. No. Uh, there are some systems in effect. Unfortunately, these guys take a huge amount of punishment. Once again, designed for multiple players. Looks like all the other guys at the convention are terrified of this boss and don't yeah. want to go anywhere near it. <laughs> yeah, right now everybody else is playing somewhere else in the game, it looks like. Yeah, exactly. Like. They're the sensible dudes. Yeah. Oh, my. So I you noticed uh, you jumped down in the ocean there, and your uh, your skill bar actually changed out to your underwater weapons for your guardian. There are underwater weapons. Yes. Oh, we should we should go in the ocean and talk let's, about let's this. Let's talk a little about bit. underwater weapons. All right. So we've uh, we've built a, a really unique thing for Guild Wars 2. If you if you dive down under the the water there, uh, when you go underwater, your weapon sets actually swap out to underwater weapons and underwater weapon skills that are designed to take advantage of the 3D space you have available to okay. you. So, for example, skill two there would actually tie an anchor around a guy and drag him down to the bottom of the ocean. Weight of justice. I like that. And there he goes. Uh, <laughs> skill, skill four will actually play an AOE that's in more of a pillar-shaped AOE as opposed to a ground-based AOE, so it takes advantage of that whole Z-axis space that you have available to okay. you. Okay. Uh, and you can weapon swap underwater just like you can on land. So right now you've got your, uh, looks like you've got your trident going, and now you can swap over and you can use a spear. Uh, and this actually plays a little more like an up-close weapon. You've got some range skills here and some melee skills for underwater. Uh, you can dodge underwater just like you can on land, and you'll quickly swim in a direction and avoid all attacks. Now, obviously what this means is that eventually we need an expansion for Guild Wars 2, which is Guild Wars in space. It's awesome. <laughs>